All right, what's going on guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about two 35 millimeter options for the Sony FE system, the Rokinon 35 millimeter 1.4 and the Sony Zeiss 35 millimeter 1.4 Z or Z, doesn't matter. Um, these are two options for the Sony a7 III and in my opinion, represent a really good balance between, you know, one option being the premium high quality option and the other option being kind of a budget alternative. And this is the first in a new series of videos where I'm gonna be looking at, you know, do you go expensive? Do you go budget? Um, if you have the money, do you splurge on the more expensive option or do you just save some money with the cheaper option and which is more worth it in my opinion? Um, personally, I'm kind of sick of reviewers saying that, you know, if you can afford the expensive one go with the expensive one or just saying you know like if you want the best the best go with the expensive one like i that's such a cop out in my opinion um i want to know nitty gritty like if you had the money which would you choose and why um don't always you know just say the expensive option is the best option because that's not always the case and um yeah i want to go through all these lenses I recently reached out to Sony Pro Support and I loaded out the 35, the 50, and the 85. I ran identical tests between all those three lenses and put them up against my budget alternatives, which is the 35 Rokinon, the 55 Sony Zeiss, and the 85 Sony lens. So hope you guys enjoy. Hope this is really uh, interesting and helpful to all of you. And yeah, let's get into the first video, which is comparing the 35mm lenses. So first up we're going to be talking about price just to kind of kick things off. The Sony Zeiss lens comes in at $19.99 Canadian on uh, Amazon.ca. Whereas the Rokinon 35mm 1.4 lens comes in at $855. Now, that is already really cheap. However, if you go with the Samyang version, which I can tell you is the exact same lens, um, you actually save another $100, bringing that price down to $755, which is even cheaper and I think uh, represents one of the best bang for the buck lenses. Full stop on the whole Sony lens lineup. Um, for $755 Canadian, you get a 35 millimeter 1.4 lens, has good autofocus, even in video. Um, it's really sharp. You know, I'll get into the nitty gritty about the image quality, but I can tell you right now for 755 bucks, it is a killer option for Sony full frame system. So aside from price, I want to talk about the build quality a little bit. Uh, with the Sony Zeiss lens, you get, you know, uh, in my opinion, a nicer manual focus ring. Um, build quality, I'd say, is roughly comparable. I mean, of course, the Sony Zeiss has, you know, better lens hood, um, better caps, you know, some of that stuff. But, you know, I don't really care about that stuff too much. Um, the materials feel pretty similar. You know, they both feel nice and solid, uh, good build construction, and I don't really have problems with either of them. Uh, but the Sony Zeiss has some more options and features on the actual lens itself. So it has an aperture ring, which is a big one. So it offers click stops at every third of a stop, all the way from 1.4 to f16, and has a de-click option on the lens. So if you're a video worker, that's really great for you. You can de-click it and use the Aperture as an ND fader-ish kind of thing, but um, yeah, if you're into using that stuff, that's great. But yeah, otherwise there's no other buttons on either of the lenses. The Rokinon is completely devoid of buttons. All it has is a manual focus ring. And um, while a lot of the other you know feature Sony lenses have autofocus, manual focus switches and focus hold buttons and stuff like that, um, the 35 does not, so. You kind of you just get the aperture ring and you get the D-click feature and that's about it. Um, weather sealing, however, is a big one. So the Sony Zeiss is weather sealed, um, whereas the Rokinon is not. Of course, for $755, it's kind of hard to expect weather sealing. But that being said, I did use the Rokinon in rain for a four hour long shoot. And although I was wiping it off periodically, you know, no water got in there, nothing happened, everything's good. So. 
I don't know. Um, the Sony Zeiss is officially weather sealed though, so that is a thumbs up for that. All right, so moving on to autofocus speed. Um, I did run a couple tests between just focusing near and far on two of the lights in my studio. So I did both in photo and in video um, just to compare, you know, just the AF speed, just how it reacts going from near to far, to near to far, to near to far, and just kind of kept doing it, get a good sampling. And to be honest, I can't really tell difference. Uh, both are really good. Uh, both perform really nicely. I've used eye detect, works perfectly on both. I've used face detect, works perfectly on both. So um, I know the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 for Sony has a little bit issue with video and just it's kind of pulsing and, and hunting and stuff like that. There's no such issues with Okanon. Um, I've used it for a lot of video work so far and I've had absolutely no issues. Obviously Sony Zeiss works perfectly for both photo and video. So I would say they kind of tie in terms of autofocus speed. I don't notice any difference between the two of them. Um, the only caveat to that being that the Rokinon has a little bit of noise when it's focusing, whereas the Sony Zeiss is completely silent. So if you need that completely silent autofocus, maybe the Sony Zeiss is a better option. However, you know, the Rokinon is pretty quiet when it's focusing and I haven't really seen any negative uh, downsides to it other than you can kind of hear it when you're close to the camera. So uh, it is what it is. I think um, just being able to match a native lens for autofocus speed for such a smaller price is pretty awesome. And I did some flare tests to see how both lenses handle flare. So again, just in my studio, dark environment, um, using one of the King TV Bolton lights, just blast it 100% into the lens. And um, as you can see, the Rokinon does way worse in this scenario. Um, there's lots of red color. There's a lot more kind of veiling flare. There's way less contrast in the image and you can just tell it's being affected by the flare a lot more. Even stopping the lens down, you see a lot more problems with the Rokinon lens. Um, if the light is right in the center of the image, you get this huge red ring just all around the image. And you know, that is a big problem. It does affect your images. Um, it would, in my opinion, ruin some images sometimes. And the Sony Zeiss deals with them a lot better. So that is definitely a plus for the Zeiss lens. All right, let's move on to looking at some images. And we're going to start off with what is, in my opinion, the most eye-opening and you know crazy test out of all the lenses um, is the 35 millimeter test and landscape application. So you kind of expect for a $2,000 lens to be sharp everywhere, full stop, you know, sharp close up, sharp far away, 1.4 to f16, you know, just be high performing and sharp across all apertures. But um, yeah, the Sony Zeiss 35 has a ton of what I think is field curvature. So we got the Rokinon here on the right. Um, the Rokinon always has a red color designation. So that's on the right here with the red. The Sony Zeiss is always blue. So that's over here on the left. And you can see even in the center of the frame, uh, focused on these buildings in the distance, the Rokinon is way, way sharper over here. Um, moving down the image, and you can continue to see just how much sharper the Rokinon is. Uh, and as we get further down, it just becomes more apparent. You know, there's just textures here, there's textures in the sand, and over here on the Sony's ice is just, just mush. Like it's, all the details are gone. And if we come over here to the left, similar story. So there's just, there's no sharpness. Like it is just completely gone here on the Sony's ice. And, you know, initially I thought that the lens was decentered or it had some sort of optical issue. I just got a bad copy. But if we come over here to the right, it's a similar story. Um, it's just as bad over here on the right. So I think it is an issue of field curvature and it's just one of the optical properties of the lens and unfortunately for landscape applications you know it is really detrimental so as we go up in aperture here we're at 2.8 and as you can see we still have the same problem so the rokinon is nice and sharp the sony zeiss is really really soft and what was really surprising to me was that the aberrations are actually slightly worse on the sony zeiss lens as well so the rokinon just looks a lot cleaner here and the Sony's eyes get a lot more of that red fringing here around the sunset and as we get even higher up in the apertures to f11 um, we have kind of a similar story so the Sony's eyes is nice and sharp now 
right here. And as we go out to the corners, you can just see the Woken Eye is way sharper still. And I'm pretty sure that is down to the field curvature. And lastly, I just want to point out that the Rokinon actually exposes about 0.8 of a stop uh, brighter than the Sony Zeiss does at f11. So not really sure what it's down to, uh, but it is a thing. So the Sony Zeiss, when you stop it down, it does expose quite a bit darker. So good or bad, I don't really know. It's just an optical property. And other than that, I would say, you know, distortion wise, they look pretty similar. Field of view, the broken on slightly wider, but it's not really an issue. And um, I really just, I'm, I'm pretty shocked at how much sharper the broken on is and how much softer the Sony Zeiss is. And to be honest, you know, I wouldn't really use the Sony Zeiss for any landscape, uh, any setup, establishing applications, even at weddings. You know, I'd be hard pressed to use that the Sony Zeiss for any of that kind of stuff because the corner shot is just terrible. <laughs> it is really bad. Um, even at f11, it's just, you know, it's still just not sharp. And um, that is a huge problem if you're planning on using this lens for a lot of applications. All right, so moving on from the landscape test and in the close up focus test, uh, the Sony Zeiss does a lot better. So these are two images on the right here taken with the broken on at minimum focus and over here on the left is the Sony Zeiss taking at minimum focus and if we jump into the middle of the image you know the broken on doesn't do too bad but it's pretty apparent that the Sony Zeiss is quite a bit sharper the textures just look cleaner um, there's a little bit of kind of muddy textures here on the broken on image um, the knurling on the lens not too bad but the Sony Zeiss does look quite a bit sharper um, coming down here, you can just notice there's a lot more aberrations here on the Rokinon image, with this blue kind of fringing on some of the corners there. And if you look at the Sony logo itself, um, you know, the aberrations do get quite bad and it robs a lot of sharpness from the image. Sony Zeiss does a lot better in this application. And I would say for most of the close focus applications, Sony Zeiss does look better. So moving on to the side here and the bokeh is definitely bigger from the Sony Zeiss. However, there's a lot more kind of imperfections inside the bokeh. So there's a lot more onion rings, um, so there's a lot more texture inside of the bokeh, whereas the broken on is quite a bit smoother, albeit quite a bit smaller. Um, I think this is again just due to the field curvature and you know it actually having more depth of field outside of the center or outside of the plane of focus, I guess, with the Sony's ice. And um, it's leading to bigger bokeh balls in this application. Um, the Rokinon does have a lot more color fringing though on its bokeh, which we'll take a look at more in future tests. So aside from 1.4, um, if we stop down to 5.6, the Rokinon actually gets a lot sharper, and I would argue is actually sharper than the Sony Zeiss. Um, you can just tell, you know, the textures, it is very sharp here on the Sony Zeiss, but the Rokinon, you know, really just has like this bite to it. Um, I'm not really sure how to explain it, but there is just a lot of sharpness coming out of this broken on when you stop it down. So as a benefit, if you're doing close focus stuff, uh, stop this lens down. F4, F5.6 starts getting really good. And then from there on, I would say it looks sharper than the Sony's eyes, which is really good. And here we have at F16. And again, I would say the broken on is holding its sharpness really, really nicely, whereas the Sony's eyes getting quite a bit um, less sharp. All right, so next up we have a bit of a complicated test. Um, basically, I had a scene with very complex lighting. So I set up one light in the back and one light on the side. And I have, you know, just a scene under our desks where there's lots of cabling and lots of, you know, just really crazy bokeh and, you know, just really, really tough imagery for the lens to resolve correctly. And I did a couple tests at all apertures with close focus, um, a couple tests at all apertures, medium, medium focus, and then all the way at the back of the room, just to see what would come up, you know, what kind of issues would come up with each lens, which lens would do better in different scenarios. And, you know, it was, may have seemed a little ridiculous at the time of doing the, doing the test, but um, as we'll get into, it actually did um, bring up a lot of issues with both the broken on and the Sony Zeiss. So getting into the first shot here, taking at 1.4 in the closest minimum focus for both lenses and we'll jump into here and the broken on is just crazy soft. 
um, close up in the corner. It just can't resolve anything. Like it's just mush, and it's mush all the way up to like f4, f5.6, something like that. Um, it never really resolves that well in the corner. Whereas the Sony Zeiss does quite a good job here, and yeah, I would say you know it's just resolving texture where the Rokinon is not. Uh, from an aberrations point of view, I would say the Sony Zeiss is a little better. Um, I really like that it's purple and green. A lot of applications are used to taking purple and green out of the photo, and purple and green are way less likely to show up in skin. Whereas red and blue, which is the aberrations on the Rokinon, um, red aberrations are the worst because it, you know, once you do that one click, kind of thing. Um, it takes color out of the skin, takes color out of the lips, and it's just a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, I find I always have to go into Photoshop to fix red aberrations. So I do appreciate that Sony has uh, purple aberrations instead of red, which is great. Um, here we can see the Sony is sharper again on that piece of cabling. Um, as I said before, the, the Sony Zeiss bouquet, a little bit busy on the on the Zeiss lens, and it's a lot smoother here on the Rokinon. However, the Rokinon has more fringing, uh, which is kind of a pain in the ass to deal with again. Um, there's gonna be a lot of cases where you have color fringing in the bokeh. That's gonna be way more distracting than if you had a, a little bit of texture in, inside the bubble. So that's another thing to be aware of. And yeah, it's kind of a similar story all across the image here. The Sony Zeiss just resolving a lot better than the Rokinon that I think it has some coma going on here. I don't know. It's just, it does, this Rokinon does not do well uh, at minimum focus. That's for sure. All right, so let's jump to F4 where the Rokinon sharpens up a little bit. So it's actually resolving some sort of texture here. Although I would, I think you'd agree the Sony Zeiss doing a lot better of a job with sharpness in the corner and you know if we kind of move around the image in the center of the image the broken is not doing too bad at all it's really just the corners that um, it tends to fall apart at minimum focus and when it comes to bokeh it's, you know we're seeing similar things um, the Zeiss being a little bit more busy the broken being a little smoother um, the broken actually looks a little bigger here in terms of bokeh but uh, in terms of shape, they look really similar. They both have uh, nine rounded blades. And last, I wanna bring up the flare. So the flare on the Rokinon is quite a bit worse, as I mentioned before. And um, it really does show up in pictures like this, in this kind of rainbow colored thing here on the side of the image, uh, whereas the Zeiss is devoid of all that. All right, so next we're gonna move on to the medium focus distance test. So this is between the Rokinon here on the left and the Sony Zeiss here on the right. And this time I'm focusing in the middle of the image on this kind of knot of wires down here. Um, basically the Rokinon does a lot better in this test. So even at 1.4, um, you're seeing a lot better sharpness, a lot better contrasts. The aberrations, I'd actually say the Rokinon does better than the Sony Zeiss. Um, although I still don't like the color of the aberrations. Um, I would say there's less in the image. And, you know, from a bokeh standpoint, the Rokinon looks a little better. If you can deal with the color fringing with the blue on the bokeh balls, it does look quite a bit better. And the sharpness is impressive at 1.4. So at the center of the image and not minimum focus distance, the Rokinon does quite an impressive job here and really holds its own against the Sony's ice. And stopping down to F4, we see a pretty similar story. So nice even sharpness across the broken on um we got that flare popping in again and over here in the background the zeiss has these kind of not the best looking bokeh balls whereas the broken a lot smoother uh, both are pretty devoid of aberrations at this point i'm just seeing kind of hints of it in certain places but both do a really good job with that all right so the last part of the test and this is the furthest distance um, focus is focused up here on the kind of top of the table at the back. I would say sharpness for the Rokinon here on the left is better than on the Sony Zeiss. So the Zeiss really shines in close focus applications, in detail shots, and the Rokinon shines 
at further distances. And that's kind of uniform for all the tests um, that I really conducted. So the broken on here is offering more contrast, more sharpness. Um, you can see here on the bag with the textures, the Sony Zeiss kind of failing on that. However, on the aberration standpoint, you know, I'd say again, the Sony Zeiss is looking a little worse, a little bit more. However, it is purple, which I do appreciate because it's easier to get rid of. But this is another case of that kind of field curvature that I was talking about before. So if you look at the Rokinon here, um, I'm focused on the table, right? That's in line with this kind of stabilizer here in the back. And on the Sony Zeiss, it is completely out of focus, whereas the computer is more in focus. With the Rokinon, the computer, which is in front of the table, um, is out of focus and the stabilizer is in focus. And if we come over here, we see the same thing. So the Rokinon has this in focus, which it should be. And on the Sony Zeiss, it is completely out of focus. So here we are, stopped down to F4. And again, the Rokinon is looking quite a bit sharper. Um, just a really nice, even sharpness all across the frame now. And again, I'd say the Sony Zeiss has a little bit worse aberrations. I'm seeing a lot more purple than I am seeing red, which is really great. However, that really ugly flare once again shows up in the Rokinon, whereas the Sony Zeiss is clean. So to me, really interesting. Um, you know, it, it looks like developing a lens at 35 millimeters is really difficult. Um, the manufacturers have to kind of weigh the options. Like, am I gonna get a flat focal plane? Do I want a little bit of field curvature? Do I want better close-up sharpness? Do I want better further away sharpness? Like, it seems like they're just kind of playing with different uh, problems and issues and what's better to have, what's worse to have. And it looks like the Sony's ice went one way Rokinon went a different way, and this test um, really kind of brought that stuff out. But um, I would say the Rokinon overall wins because if you just stay away from minimum focus distance, um, it's going to offer better sharpness, uh, better aberration control, and you know I I can deal with a bad flare here and there. I would say in this test, it's pretty impressive that the Rokinon can resolve more sharpness and have better bokeh in this complex situation than the Sony's Ice. All right, so moving on, we have a quick uh, longitudinal chromatic aberration test, and the Rokinon's here on the left, Sony's Ice on the right, and as we've kind of already seen, um, when it comes to longitudinal chromatic aberration, the Rokinon does worse. Um, there's definitely more kind of bokeh fringing and color coming out of the Rokinon. Um, here we have a 1.4. I would say sharpness is pretty even across the two of them. I'm not saying one's definitely sharper than the other. Um, we're seeing a little bit more color in the back coming out of the Rokinon and in the front a lot more red, whereas the Sony's Ice has a little less purple, but both have it definitely at uh, 1.4. And if we jump over to f2.8, the Sony Zeiss here on the right is pretty much devoid of any aberrations. I would say that's pretty clean, not really seeing any color, whereas the Rokinon is definitely showing up red, um, especially in the corner and there's just a kind of touch of bluish green here on the back. And even if we go all the way up to F8 on the Rokinon, um, you can see the back is completely, you know, aberration free. However, in the front, you're still seeing just a little hint of red. So it never really gets rid of its aberrations um, at close focus. Um, whereas the Sony Zeiss cleans up at F2.8 and then from there on it's devoid of any aberrations. So that's definitely a win for the Sony. And we're gonna move on to some lateral chromatic operation tests. So this is a good test of how these lenses resolve fine detail. Um, you know, some shots and you really wanna resolve fine details in things like trees and stuff like that. You definitely don't wanna see lots of things like fringing and aberrations in things like tree branches. And this is definitely where it's gonna show up. So the Rokinon here on the right is doing better, I would say, than the Sony Zeiss. Um, showing better aberration control there's less purple there's less green and the sharpness is a big thing that stands out um, there is kind of a point in the middle where the Sony's ice looks pretty similar but definitely if you go out to the sides um, this tree branch is a good example this branch here is quite sharp on the Rokinon however on the Sony's ice it is pretty soft and if we move into this part um, Rokinon is looking better for sure. 
definitely less aberrations on the Rokinon lens. Jumping to 2.8, um, kind of a similar story. So this Zeiss in the middle of the image is looking pretty good in terms of aberration control. I'm not seeing any purple, not really seeing any green. And if we move it to the side, it's definitely looking sharper. However, it's definitely not as sharp as the Rokinon. Rokinon cleans up really nicely at smaller apertures. And I would say it's doing a really good job with aberrations as well. Coming over to the right side of the image, uh, the Zeiss just looks soft. And I think, again, it's just the um, focal plane curvature, uh, field curvature, whereas the Rokinon is completely flat. So that's why you see the sharpness extend all the way to the sides of the image here, whereas the Sony Zeiss, it falls off um, right around the middle. So big points to the Rokinon in this test. Um, at f2.8 and up, you're really not gonna see any aberrations or anything weird happening there. And I would say it, the Rokinon just is hands down sharper. It just looks a lot better. All right, so I quickly went to the studio and did a couple shots with Lex, um, just doing some headshots, kind of portraiture stuff, just to see what would come up. And to be honest, these lenses look pretty identical. Um, we'll zoom into the face here. I would say the Rokinon looks a little bit sharper. However, it's there's not much in it. And uh, even when you get to things like hair, um, yeah, they look pretty identical. I would say the bokeh with the Rokinon looks better, it looks smoother. Um, there's some kind of weird stuff going on with it there with the hair. Um, same thing on that side. It just looks a little bit smoother in the Rokinon, so that is points for that. And a big thing to me was the kind of bokeh around the shirt here. Here it looks pretty busy, it looks a little bubbly, whereas on the Rokinon it looks a lot smoother. And just to see it stop down, um, we have here a portrait at 5.6 for both lenses, and you can see how much brighter it exposes on the Rokinon than on the Sony. But if we zoom in, we see just tack sharp images for both. Um, again, not a lot of differences, and they both do quite a good job with portraits. So last but not least, I did a quick um, autofocus tracking test with Lex and Isla just running towards the camera. I did this with all the lenses across multiple days of shooting and um, you know, they both do great. Um, they never lose focus, either of these lenses. Um, they both, they just kind of like jump around with subjects. So sometimes Lex will be in focus, sometimes the stroller will be in focus and then it'll kind of jump around. But both lenses basically they did identical. Um, as I saw with the speed test, they both look identical and, you know, I just, I can't really pick a winner between them. I would say, I guess the Zeiss wins just because it's silent, which is better. Um, but in terms of performance, I can't really pick them apart. They both did great. However, um, from an image quality standpoint, we have the Sony Zeiss here on the left and the Rokinon on the right, and we can definitely see there's just a huge aberration problem with the Zeiss here. Um, there's a lot more color in the background. You can see this kind of aberration up here in the hair that's really robbing the image from sharpness. And yeah, just overall, I would say the Rokinon looks a lot better in this case. And you can see this across all the shots kind of leading up. Um, the, at this distance, the Rokinon resolves way more sharpness than the Sony Zeiss. All right, so in conclusion, um, it's really obvious to me that the Sony Zeiss is just better at working with close subjects. Um, if you're doing detail shots, you know, working with, you know, wedding details, uh, table stuff. If you're doing close-up portraits, you know, things like that, um, where you're isolating a subject in a scene and you don't really care about edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, um, the Sony Zeiss does quite a bit better. Um, I wouldn't say it completely wins because the Rokinon's bokeh is smoother. Um, you know, once you stop the lens down, it performs a lot better at those close distances. And as soon as the focus distance gets like a meter away, the Rokinon is basically on par. So the Sony does do better at, at a close distance, but I would say it's landscape distance. It's, it's ability to work at further distances. is just so bad that uh, I, you know, I would personally not pay $2,000 for this lens. Um, a lot of times I'm using 35 millimeters to do setup shots, establishing shots, um, just stuff where it needs to be sharp from edge to edge. Um, you know, if I'm doing a, a wedding table at a reception, I would expect it to be sharp from the speaker all the way to the, you know, the flowers on the other side of the frame. 
I don't want to see it just kind of fall off into blur, you know, and that's a huge consideration if I was thinking of picking up the more expensive Sony Zeiss lens. Um, if you're a video shooter, you know, there are quite a few advantages, especially if you don't need critical sharpness um, in the video, which is typically the case. Um, you know, the aperture ring with the declicked aperture is definitely a bonus. The manual focus ring is definitely a lot better. Um, there's less flaring. And the big one is the autofocus is actually silent, which is, you know, a big deal if you're a video shooter. So yeah, overall, I'm gonna be sticking with the Rokinon. Um, if I'm gonna be doing close-up work, I'm probably gonna be you know, using a 50 mil or 85 mil lens to do things like portraiture and stuff like that. If I'm gonna be capturing a scene, you know, the Rokinon 35 does better with that um, as a lens. So I think it works better for me. Um, if I'm really worried about the flare, I might just pull out the 1635 f4, which has a really nice flare. Um, it's actually one of my favorite flaring lenses. I think the flare comes out really nice and artistic with that lens. So I might pull out that, but in general, I would say the, the edge to edge sharpness at landscape distances is, um, you know, a, a bigger advantage than having some close focus capability with the Sony Zeiss. All right, so that's it for this test. Um, I really hope it's helpful to you. I hope you didn't mind, you know, going through so many images and so many technical tests. I would say overall, I'm really surprised with the Rokinon. It handles things really well. Of course, you know, there are some trade-offs and close-up image performance in the corners is definitely a downside to the Rokinon. And along with the flares and the uh, non-silent autofocus, but overall, um, I would say, again, that Sony Zeiss, it just doesn't do it for me. Even if I had the money, I probably wouldn't pick it up. I'd probably stay with a different lens. I'm actually really interested in trying out the Sigma to see if it can kind of merge between the two. Um, it's a little bit expensive, more expensive than the Rokinon, a lot cheaper than the Sony Zeiss, and maybe it'll kind of merge the performances together as well. So hopefully that'll be a future video, but for now, that's it for me. Um, if you're looking to purchase any of these lenses, there are some Amazon links down below, as well as links for any of the other gear that we use around here in the studio. And until the next one, which will be the 50 millimeter test, I'll see you guys later.